Welcome, Kipsters, to our final lesson on straight statistics. Today we are going to be talking about justifying predictions using data. Before I go any further, I want to break down some of the words for you. Justify. Justify is a word that means to reason. And when we reason, we actually use logic. So we use information and things that make sense. Okay? So justifying predictions using data, we're going to be reasoning in order to make predictions using data. Now, I'm going to give you some gestures, and I'd like for you to repeat after me, just so you get a, a sense as to why we're doing what we're doing and what these words mean. When we're trying to make predictions, we need to literally use the data so that it can give us some view and some light to see. Okay? So when we make predictions, we don't want to pull them from the air. We don't want to just think of a number. If somebody asks you, uh, how many students are at your school? 40. You, you don't have any information to do that. So you don't want to make a blind prediction. You want to be asked, predict this, okay? And then use your data so that you can literally see and have that give you ground, okay? Give you some information so that you can make logical sense, okay? So when we make predictions, we're literally going to make predictions, but then use information so that we can make accurate predictions based on some information. Data is another word for information. Let's move forward. So there are two ways that we're going to justify predictions from data. Okay, justify means to reason. Predictions are conclusions that we make using data. And we're going to use two strategies. The first is to look for a pattern. Watch my hands. There's a pattern going on here. Okay. Watch another pattern. This is another pattern. An increase. Steady increase. Constant increase. This is another pattern. Steady decrease. This is another pattern, but you have to look carefully to see it. Okay. So we look for patterns in, in the data. When we look for patterns, we are able to see things that tell us what will come next. The second method that we can use to justify predictions are finding a number within the range. So literally, this is what you're doing. Range, as you know, is the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So what we're going to do is this is the minimum and this is the maximum. We're going to find a number between the minimum and the maximum. Let's do that together. We're going to find a number within the range. So range has to do with the minimum and the maximum. We're going to find a number within the range, within the minimum and within the maximum. So greater than the minimum but less than the maximum. Okay. Let's move forward and let's actually put our new knowledge to test. We have a line graph here that is titled Miles Run by Ariana. So we're looking here at this line graph, and the first thing that we need to look at, just to make sure we're clear on it, is that the x-axis is going to show us some measurement of time. In this case, we're seeing months, January, February, March, April, May. And on the y-axis, it's going to give us two pieces of information. Y-axis is going to give us two pieces of information. They are the amounts and scale, going from zero to the first line and telling us what each line is worth after that and also what the midpoint between each line is worth as well. So, we are going from zero to two and I am seeing that zero to the first line is two, so therefore this is two. And the, we're going to take two and divide it by two to figure out what this midpoint is and that's going to be two divided by two, which is one. So that's one more than the bottom line, which is zero. So one more than zero is one. That makes this one. That makes this would be one more than the bottom line, which is two. It would be three. One more than the bottom line, which is four. And now it would be five. One more than the bottom line would be seven. One more than the bottom line would be nine. One more than the bottom line would be eleven. And so on and so forth. So I've also looked over here, and my amount is going to be in miles, okay? So I'm looking at miles over here. So every number that I say, it's going to be in miles. First thing I want to do when I'm looking at a line graph is to literally 
um, tell what each point is worth and show what's happening over time, increases or decreases in between each point, in between each point. Okay? So January, I have the point at 12 miles. February is right in between 14 and 16, right in the middle of it. So it's going to be one more than 14, which is 15 miles. And then uh, for March, I have, it's right in between 16 and 18, that's 17. For April, it's right on the line of 20, and for that's 20 miles. And for May, that's right, in, right on the line of 22. Okay, so I've identified what each point is worth. So if I asked you uh, how many m miles did Ariane run in February, you would say, 15. But if I ask you between which two months, um, now I need to figure out what's happening between each two months. So from January to February, that's an increase of what's the difference between 15 and 12? It's 3. So it's an increase of 3 miles. Next, we have 15 to 17, and that is an increase of 2 miles. From 17 to 20, that's an increase of, what's the difference between 20 and 17? 3. From 20 to 22, that's an increase, because it's going up from left to right, of 2. So once I've done that, I now can see that there's a pattern going on between each month. I have an increase of 3, an increase of 2, an increase of 3, an increase of 2. So I can see that there's a pattern. The next month I can predict that it's going to be, if it's an increase of 3, increase of 2, increase of 3, increase of 2, then the next month is going to be an increase of 3. So according to the line graph above, how many miles might Ariani run in June? Well, June is the next month after May, so I'm going to add 3 more to 22, which would give me 25, and give me meaning, 25 miles. Next, let's actually not not you look for patterns, and let's try it and see if we can find a range, find a number within the range. I have a bar graph right here, and the question is asking me, Rebecca runs more hours than Rachel, but less hours than Allison. How many hours might Rebecca run? Well, here is labeling Rachel, here we have Amber, here we have Allison, and here we have Francis. Once again, because the writing may be small, I have Rachel, Amber, Allison and Francis, but no mention of Rebecca. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find out what her numbers could be based on something, and I would use predictions and base it on data. So let me first do my job of labeling what each bar is worth, okay? From zero to six, that's from zero to the first line is six. So the halfway point between 0 to 6 would be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So 3 more than 0 is 3. 3 more than 6 would be 9. So that's literally what these values are in between the halfway points of each line. Okay, so Rachel is uh, past the 12 line and in between the 18 line. So it's going to be 3 more than 12, which is 15 hours. Next, we have Amber, which is right on the line of 18. So that's going to be 18 hours. We have Allison, which is right on the line of 24. That's going to be 24 hours. And then Francis is right in between the lines of 18 and 24. So we know what that halfway midpoint is. That's going to be 3 more than the bottom line. And that's 3 more than 18, which is 21. Okay? So we have 21 hours. Now, Ray says Rebecca runs more hours than Rachel. Well, how many hours does Rachel run? Rachel runs 15. So I know that Rebecca has to run more than 15 hours. And then it says, but less than Allison. Well, Allison runs 24 hours. Okay? She has to run less than 24 hours. So I can figure out how many hours Rebecca might run. Well, it could either be 16. That's greater than 15, but less than 24. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 hours. So either of those choices would work because the number is within the range of 15 as the minimum and 24 as the maximum. Is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 is within the range of 15 
and 24.